Hey everybody, it's Steamboat28 here, and today I want to take a look at one of those pieces of software that has really helped me organize things lately. And that's pretty impressive given my normal organizational skills. Uh, it's called Orient 3D, and it is a really easy way to categorize, to tag, to search, and to find your 3D models even across folders. It's great way to see exactly what you're looking for visually instead of having to read file names and go through all your file systems and up and down the folders and hierarchies. You can just look and see what you have and it's amazing. Um, now before we get started I want to let you know no money has changed hands. They're not paying me to say this. I'm not paying them to be allowed to say this. Um, they didn't buy me lunch. Nothing like I just really like this and there's not a whole lot of documentation on it right now and so I thought I would help out because it took me a little bit to learn it and I'm still not perfect at everything but I figured you know uh, why not help with what I know so far so um, with that out of the way let's go ahead and download the program okay so to download the program this part will be really easy if you've ever used the internet ever you will have a leg up if you've never used the internet to download a program this will still be easy for you too so we open up a browser window and we go to o-r-y-n-t-3-d.com orient3d.com hit enter boom here we are right at the first you're uh, shown the download button in this little blue right here it's free you can donate with paypal via this button right here uh, or you can buy models at their other their other marketplaces, Mini Hoarder and More Gaming 3D. Um, they break down how much it costs them to host this program, how much it costs them to develop the program, and all of that stuff. Um, their total operational costs and how much that they've gotten through donations. If you like this software, please go support it financially. I personally am not in a position to at the moment, but that's why I'm trying to help with this to try to get them uh, more traffic in that direction because I really like it and I really want to see them do better, but I can't hand them money because I don't have any. <laughs> um, but this big blue button up here, that's the download button. We're going to click that. Okay, now the ones in the teal down here, they're the pre-releases and they're going to have all the cool new features, but they're also going to be a little bit unpredictable. So I stick with the yellow ones instead. Um, just pick the one that matches your OS. I'm not going to do it right now because I've done this like four times in prep for this video and then once before that for my own personal use. But when you click it, it will start the download automatically and then you um, open the download and it'll install it automatically and then it will run it for you. Like first time, bam, done, awesome, cool. Okay, so let's go and or open Orient 3D and check out the UI. One of my only gripes with this program is it doesn't remember if I've opened it full size in the last session. I'm gonna be talking to the devs about that on the Discord. You should be in the Discord too, giving your feedback, it will help a lot. I prefer all of my stuff maximized and also I just got clutter on the desktop. So this is what we see when we first open it up. Now at the very top you'll see the explore tab, and you'll see the sources tab, you'll see a settings menu and you'll see a help menu. Cool. Below that we have a hamburger menu that controls this. Awesome. Then we have a search bar, which we can type in. Type B, type B, type B. Right? Cool. Now, if I want to save that search, I can click this bookmark button here and it'll save typey, typey, typey into the save searches. Let's do that. Boop. Demo. So we go into the save searches and bam, there's demo. Typey, typey, typey. Typey, typey, typey. Right? Cool. I don't want that there anymore. We're going to right click and delete it dope okay now if i want to get rid of the typey 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 in the search bar this little x here bam done this one just refreshes your results not a huge deal cool um now over here we've got the hamburger menu that controls this this is kind of neat um this is your sources which we don't have many of right now because um i moved a lot of my things and <laughs> forgot to tell the program where I moved them to so that's a me problem um, but then we have collections and you can add a collection here they're kind of like categories we'll talk about them later um, but there's your collections um, I have one there 
without models in it because the Orient 3D software has a separate file where it stores the metadata for your models. And so as soon as I figure out where I put these models that are in this category and load them in again, it'll apply all the categories and all the tags that they had the last time it saw them. Cool. Uh, here's the tags. We'll talk about those in a minute too. You can filter them, you can reorder them, add them, whatever, save searches we discussed a minute ago. Uh, down here it tells you how many models you're showing at a time, 50, 100, whatever. Um, and then previous and next because it will have pages. It will have pages to show you. Um, these are the page navigations in the main, main window. And then you can sort by name or by path. And then ascending or descending. Cool. Down here it shows you uh, how many of how many and how many total that you're, you're seeing right now. Like there's 150 models and you're looking at number two or page two. It would be like page two of five and so many total and then how many pages there are. It's it's yeah, that's how we work. Okay, in this section we're going to talk about the settings menu. I'm going to go a little bit out of order from what might be expected, but I promise it's important. So we're going to go to the settings menu here, and what we see up here is an about section. It tells you what version you're running, uh, shows you the change log for this particular version. Uh, you can check for updates on startup automatically, or you can manual check for updates. Cool. Dope. Down here we have model settings, and that lets you pick the color of this preview here. I kind of like that. That's pretty cute. I like that. Let's do... Let's do that. I like that. And then uh, it gives you a hex code for the, the colors that you're, you're using here. So if you want a specific color for your model previews, if that's what's uh, best for you to register visually, or if you have a brand and you like seeing things in your brand colors, you know, whatever, um, that's where you set that. Um, ambient inclusion and adaptive rendering are toggles. Uh, if you know what those words mean, awesome. If you don't, you can Google them, it's fine. I won't tell anybody, there's no judgment here. I had to do it myself. So, uh, over here we've got default model rotation. And this just asks how your models are typically oriented. Now, a lot of people will do Z axis up because it just goes with a lot of what a lot of people were taught in different classes. Some people will do Y as up. Uh, I don't necessarily understand it, but I get it. Uh, so you just set whichever ones your models show up as. Okay. Now down here, this is really important. You can set your system theme. You can set it for the... Oh, God, that's bright. Jesus, Lord, why? You can set your theme there. Um, and then this is neat. This is an external program location. I've got mine set to Cura, but basically you can put in your slicer here. Uh, I know it works with Cura. I know it works with slicer, the, the one with the three in it. Uh, and I know that it works with uh, Lychee. It doesn't currently work with ChuChuBox. I think they're working on that. I'm not positive. Do not quote me or hold me to that in any way. But basically, you set the EXE of your slicer here, and there are options in other displays and views where you can click a button and it will automatically export it to that slicer, whatever model you're working with. Cool. Uh, usage reporting. This is just typical like bug fixes stuff. If you're really curious about what it says, just click this button. It'll take you to the website and they'll show exactly what they're looking at. Now, these are other things. Uh, database, it says zero model records. Um, remove the contents of the model's database. Resetting it to an empty state, you will need to rescan after doing this. This is literally and figuratively the big red button. If you screw up something or if you need to start completely over, press this button it will nuke your entire database in in the program itself it won't touch your models in their own folders but it will nuke the settings and database for this program and you can start over now if you're afraid you'll accidentally hit the big red button and not mean to down here we've got export settings for a backup and then we've got import settings in case you do accidentally hit the big red button but I think I think the only reason any of us would accidentally hit the big red button is because it's big and red and, and a button. And some of us just have that compulsion. Okay, so the next most important topic is 
picking your sources. And we do this because if we don't have sources, there's no models for Orient 3D to work with. So we go over here and we click sources. Now there are multiple ways to do this and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite. You can add local source and you can go, I've got a tutorial on the desktop here and we can open that and we can open that and we can click that and we can pick it. Awesome, but these aren't really showing up. It shows a preview of the individual files, but it's not really doing a lot, right? We can add that as a source and we'll see what that looks like. We'll import. This is the green import button. We'll import it. We'll look over here. Sources. And it still puts all the files together. So that's not super effective. And the reason it's not super effective is because you would have to do that with every individual subfolder. So let's remove that, which is, um, we can go through that again in a second. But we're going to add local source. So instead, we're going to go to the desktop and we're going to pick the entire tutorial folder. That's where I've got all the files I'll be using in this tutorial. And we can pick that and it shows every single folder underneath it. This is a much quicker way to handle this issue. Now, the only downside of this is that when you go to remove local source with this hamburger menu here, remove local source, boop, all of your folders are gone. But that's not a thing you're going to do often, I don't think. So we're going to add that back, add local source, our main folder, pick library. And one of the reasons I like to do it this way is because I've got all of these here. Now, if I want to add from another place, I can do that too. Uh, I'm going to add a second folder real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and now we've added the main 3D folder file that I personally use. This is the one on my personal drive, not the one for the tutorial. And there's so many different ways to handle this, but like, look what I've got. I've got everything where it needs to be. I've upload, I've, I've added two folders and all of my models are in it. Every one of them. How cool is that? Like, you, I didn't have to go through and pick each individual file. I didn't have to go through and pick each individual subfolder. I added two sources, and all of my models are here. Right? That's awesome. So what we're going to do next is this, uh, we're going to remove this one because it's kind of cluttery. So we'll go over here to the very end, library options, click, remove local source, boop, and it's gone. In the other one, we can do this. This is a good one to pick anytime you add new models or take models away. It checks for changes to the file system since the last time you loaded the source, like since the time that you added the source initially. So we'll click that. Uh, this one is open location. What that will do is if you click it, it will open up the location in your file system where the files actually are. You can do that for any one of these subfolders as well. So you can see what's inside it. Uh, this is a singular file. Those single files can either be opened in an external program or opened with the default program. Let's see what that does. Oh, cool. It just opens it with whatever the system default is. I hadn't tried that before. So this one is do this. Um, you see here, you can click the question mark and it says when processing a folder, the double arrows are use the parent settings to process this folder. The no is don't make this model or this folder a model. And check is make this folder a model if the criteria are met. Now, files, individual files are not considered models in this program. And that was one of the things that was the hardest for me to wrap my head around when we were talking about adding sources. I spent so much time in the Discord bothering the devs like, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. And then they explained to me, if you have multiple pieces to a particular object that you want to print, say you have a paper towel holder and it's got seven pieces, or you have an action figure or a statue and it's got arms and legs and all of that, they're all going to be separate files in that folder. So by grouping the folder itself as a model, you can take care of all of those pieces at the same time when it comes to export them to your program 
but you can also look and see each file individually within Orient 3D. So that's what really made it click for me, and hopefully that helps you too. So right now, I've got it set for the parent folder, this folder up here, um, to make every scanned folder into a model because these are all like, whatever mom does, that's what we're doing. And mom says, yeah, let's do it. Cool, cool. Next category is filter by. <clears throat> this column uh, determines what in a folder will become a model. Um, a folder, if you have the, the star, it'll do it no matter what. Um, the leaf is if the folder has no subfolders, which is, I think, probably the best, honestly, but whatever. Uh, the image icon is the folder must contain an image, a picture of some kind, like a preview maybe. Uh, the cube is the folder must contain a 3D file, an STL, a 3MF, or an OBJ. And I think that's very important, so I always have that one checked. Uh, and then the ruler and pen is the folder must contain a support configuration file like LYS, LYT, Chi2. This last one is going to be for making sure that you have your supported models, your pre-supported models shown up. I don't really like pre-supports that much. I collect them, but I don't really search for them a lot. So I keep that one off. But if you want to look at only your pre-supports, click that button. So I'm going to do this. And that way, uh, every folder that it does not have subfolders is going to be a model as long as it has a 3D file. Let me go through that again. Every folder that does not have subfolders because of the leaf will become a model if it contains a 3D file because the cube. So that's how we're going to do that. With the files, uh, this little uh, arrow, this cross made of arrows, says collect files found in the process folder. And then the little arrow tree says collect files found in the process folder as well as the files found in descendant folders unless those files end up being their own model. So this is all the files in the model and this is everything in the scanned location unless something else turns it into a model further down the line. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that, I think, because I've got this other over here set. Now these are tags. Now this is really cool because this you can set tags individually. And that's one of the things I want to do right now. If you click the tag, it allows you to exclude tags or include tags. I'm going to click don't inherit any parent. Well, no, I'm not. Um, if you click that up here, it might be important. If you added tags to your main, to your main section, uh, the don't inherit parent tags will be kind of important. If you didn't, uh, these are tags to exclude, which like if you don't want it to say that it's a uh, uh, sports ball, then you would put sports ball here, right? Uh, add these tags to include. Now I'm going to put, this is where I put, um, because, now the add these tags is tags to include. This is where I like to put the creator's name. Because of the way that I download files, usually from Cults 3D, also not sponsored by them, but usually that's where I get them, and most often those are categorized. When you open the, the zip file, they have a top folder with the creator's name in it, and then the actual model in a subfolder or something like that within that folder. So this is what I like to do here. Because I've got the, the file system set up this way, I can set up 3D Workshop for the 3D Workshop. Right. If we go to Ash Pool and go across, we can set up tags. Ash Pool. Right. And we'll do this for all of them. Uh, JL3. And we'll do this with the rest of them and we'll be right back.
right, and this is the last one. Okay, now you can go through here and you can see these tags are not case sensitive. I don't know if they plan to change that in the future, if they like it the way it is, not my business. But from now on, everything that shows up from the Ashpool folder will have the Ashpool tag. Everything that shows up from the Utonkin folder will have the Utonkin flag. Everything from the plastics folder will have the plastics tag. I find that super helpful. Now this last column is the actual files stuff. Um, so this column is the save changes. So if I want to save the tags and everything, I'll click save config. Boop. All right. That activates this green button we'll talk about next. Uh, if I want to do all of them. If I want to save everything at once, I just click the one at the very top. Now you can do it here at the tutorial level where we we first loaded our source, but if you do it at the top, it does it for all of your sources. If I had three or four different uh, folders in here, it would do it for all the folders at once. Uh, this one is revert all unsaved configurations. If I screwed up before I save it, I can click that button and it'll go back to whatever it was from the last save. And then these are the green buttons that actually import the models into the program. All of this is setting up for the program. Until you click these little green buttons, they don't do anything. So we're just gonna click the import from here button on the top layer. You can find the top layer by clicking that. There we go. That'll collapse it and expand it. And we'll hit the import from here. Now, also of note, library options at the very back backup user files, uh, remove these models, and remove local source. We don't want to do any of those right now, but we're going to import, and then we're going to move to the next topic. Okay, so now we're back in the Explore tab, and you'll notice it looks a little different. We have all these little squares here. Now, the ones that I have don't really have any preview files in them. You could probably make them, but whatever but they all have different um, little icons here. That's for all the different models that we have. So um, we're going to go through all of these individual bits on one model thing. This is where, if we had a preview image, it would show. This is where I'd have the preview image. If I had one, um, that's where it would go. Uh, down here, we have the name analog-calendar, that's the name of the file itself. We may not like that, we'll change it in a minute. And then here we have tags and collections. Now, this shows it has one tag and zero collections. If we click either one of these, it opens both of them because the, the tags and collections are edited at the same time in this window. And you'll notice it takes up the entire pane, the entire uh, pane here. That's because it's a toggle. You click it on and you click it off. That becomes important later because this is a pop-up. It is not a uh, toggle. So anyhow, it shows us that we have one tag from before when we did the sources. That tag is JL3. And we said that that was the creator who made this because that's how we imported the source. That's the tag it got from the source, but it doesn't have any collections yet. Next section, we'll talk about them. The file icon, you click that and it shows every single file in this model. So every mile, every file in this folder. So uh, if we click on any one of these, we get our 3D preview in the color that we picked in the settings menu. Right? How cool is that? Now, if we wanted, <clears throat> Now, if we wanted, we could take a screenshot, boop, and then we will close that and we'll use that screenshot later. So now there's four files in there. We've added the screenshot directly to that folder. So we click that off. Ah, see, there we go. There's our screenshot right there. It has become the default cover image. I kind of don't like that one, so I think I'm going to do it again. So we'll right click this. Yeah, it's too low. Right click this, open file location. There it is. We'll just delete that. 
Okay. This lets you see all of your models in a preview. Now, if you in any preview window, if you hold down left click and move your mouse, it will rotate it. In any preview window, if you right click your mouse, hold the right click, the right button, and move it, it will pan it. Uh, and scroll wheel is going to zoom for you. That's in any preview window in this program. And it says that up here. Double click cycles through rotate and translate controls, which is lets you like more particularly apply things instead of just like roaming around with your mouse. And then you can uh, move it along axes somehow. Whatever. Uh, it's a whole thing. It's, it's a whole entire thing. Uh, and I don't really, I don't, I don't know much about it. But there we are. So, and then this is a toggle too. And you click that. All of these buttons are toggles. This button is the notes button. So we're going to here a 3D analog desk calendar. Period. Now, these are our notes. We're going to save those with the save icon, or we're going to revert them. Oop. Oh, I messed up. A 3D perpetual analog. Analog. I can type. I am a writer. I know how words go. 3D perpetual analog desk. Top clock. Save. Cool. Now, we can toggle that off. And then here... We have browse contents, which opens up this cool window. When we hit browse contents, it shows the files. It shows the taxonomy, which is the tags and collections. And it shows 3D perpetual analog desktop clock. It shows our notes as well as a preview. So it's got the preview image, the, the cover image, and then that's the default. We can click this one, each individual file in here, and it shows us this expanded preview window of it each individual file, which is really cool, I think, that it's got this. But it's basically the entire little bitty window that we just looked at, but it's all in one location. It's all embiggened, to use the Simpsons word. And you can just handle everything from here. Uh, what does this button do? Oh, yeah, same. Uh, rename model open. So it's the same as this other one down here, which you click it. Browse. That's browse contents. Open location does what we talked about earlier. Uh, it opens in your file system. And then if we go in here, open an external program. This is the cool one I talked about. Remember, I've got mine set up for Cura, right? So I click that button. And it's opening Cura, right? And then when Cura opens, there are the models. There they all are. Now... In Cura, it kind of stacks everything on top of each other. If you use Leechy, it doesn't do that. It actually spaces them out in an appropriate way where it doesn't look like they're all trying to climb on top of each other to get on the last lifeboat or whatever. But in Cura, it kind of does that. you got to fiddle with it a little bit. I'm not good with Leechy. I'm still learning to use it. I'm too broke to pay for it. Blah, blah. So, um, World's Tiniest Violin. Set cover image lets us change what this preview image is here. If we had a separate image that we wanted to, say we printed this out and we took a picture of it printed out on our desk, all painted up, and we wanted that picture to remind us what this is, then we would go here and we would set cover image. Now we can also clear the cover image. Boop. So now we don't have a cover image. Why don't we have a cover image? We can also set the cover image up here. Um, and then this one, we can rename the model. This is important to me because I want it to say analog calendar instead of with all those little dots and dashes and whatever else in it, right? And then we click this and we can open it in sources as well. And it shows us exactly in the sources tab where we are. JO3 analog calendar. This is what we're looking at. Right? Cool. That is all that you need to know about this little pane for now. Oh, wait. I do want to take another, uh, another screenshot.
and we want to set that as the cover image. There it is, a little high, but I did it. All right, so I'm gonna rename the rest of these and get cover images for them, and then we'll start talking about the other cool stuff. Okay, now that I've renamed everything, now that I've gotten display images of everything, we can go through kind of what I got. I got an analog calendar from JL3. I got a T-Box from Plastics. I got this S-shaped coat hook from Karma Printing. This uh, tea tray with a drip tray under that is from McQueen, e, McQueen at ES because the ES was capitalized uh, before. Again, the tags are not case sensitive. I got a K-Cup display dispenser from Maker Near. I got a Keurig dispenser from Utonken. Now, both of these are because my wife talked me into getting a Keurig. I hate that I love it. Uh, Multi-key holders from Lumor. They hold multiple keys. Uh, seed storage has little tubes, like little test tubes with seeds go in there by Ashpool. That's going to be useful for the gardening later. Uh, I named this one Coat Thulhu uh, because it is a coat rack made of tentacles. I just, I thought that name was clever, so I went with it. Uh, from 3D Workshop, and I got a poop scoop from Wasili 1972. That's what we're working with going forward. So, now we're going to talk about categories and tags. Now, they're, they seem really similar, but in my opinion, they're a little bit different. To me, a tag describes an object, like what is it made of, what color is it, kind of vaguely what does it do, um, and a category is more of grouping like things together even if they don't share descriptive attributes. So like for example, a stop sign might be in the sign collection even though its tags are red and octagonal and it doesn't share those tags with anything else in the signs collection. Whereas a yield sign and a caution sign both have, they're both in the sign collection and they both have the yellow tag, but their shape tags are different. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. That's how I see it in my head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do tags and collections. So we're gonna click this and we're gonna add a tag and we're gonna say perpetual multi-part print. Uh, we'll just do multi-part. Actually, I don't like the perpetual, so we'll click this X tag to remove it. Now we can't do anything with this tag because it got that tag from the sources menu. But if we add tags here, we can remove them. So if you want to change that tag, you've got to go all the way back to sources to do it. Okay. Now let's add a collection. I think this is going to be desk and office. Now let's do office, the office collection. What, what did I do wrong? All right, so can I not add a, add a collection? Office. Oh, I have to create the collection over here, I forgot. Okay, we'll do that over here then. Collections, boop, office. You know, in fact, Let's go ahead and add office here and we'll deal with it in a minute. Let's see, we type it in and there it comes up, office. We had to make it over here in the collections first, but then we could add it. I'm also gonna add the tag calendar because that I might have calendars outside of the office. There might be a kitchen calendar that I wanna use. Um, whereas over here, T box, we'll put the tag T because we might have other things like the tea tray that go with the tea, but maybe the tea tray stays in the living room and the tea box stays in the kitchen. So let's add another collection. We'll call it kitchen. And then we'll add that collection over here kitchen. All right. So those are saved. And we can do the same with the rest of these. Uh, code hook, we'll say. Mm. 
clothing. We'll put this in the home category, which we don't have a home category. So once again, we come over here, we click the new collection button, and we say home. Okay, uh, but we've got the clothing tag on it, and we'll put a hanger tag on it. All right, and so we can do all of the rest of these, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Let's look at some of the things that I've done here. I we went to the analog calendar, the tea box, and the coat hook together. Uh, did the tea tray? We marked it tea and kitchen. Uh, we and let's add a beverage. This one there. Nah, let's not. Um, and then we went to K cup display dispenser. We added coffee K cup and added it to the kitchen collection. Uh, we added coffee K cup and the kitchen collection. Uh, same as the other K cup dispenser. Multi key holders. Uh, I added keys because I might have other things to do with our keys. And I made an everyday carry collection because that means I'll keep that on my person. Like I'll remember that, you know. Uh, we put a garden collection here and we put seed and storage. You know, in retrospect, now that we've got that storage tag, let's put it over here too. Storage. And then let's put it in this one as well. Storage. And also the tea box here. And it recommends them for you. Like that's that's pretty cool. And then if we wanted to, we could do beverages, 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 and then the tea tray could also have beverages. I didn't mean to put that in the kitchen. I meant to put that in the dining collection. And we will do ahead and go ahead and do a beverages tag. And we just add that and it autofills and we click the right one. Cool. So that's all that. The Coat Thulu, we added clothing and hanger and put it in home just like the S hook and then poop scoop. We added cat, we added pet, and we added bathroom because we keep our cat box in a little corner in the bathroom because it's easier to clean up that way. Um, but I put cat and pet because if I want to look, we have a dog as well. So if I want to look for everything for pets, I can do that. If I want to look for something cat specific, then I can use that tag. So that's all to set up. Like that's not a, a it, it seems like more of a big deal than I made it. Um, but you know, I kind of like everything in the home to be under one, one category. So why don't I just take the kitchen and move it, uh, click and hold and move it and put it in the home. I wanted to put the office in the same spot and the garden and the everyday carry. And you know, the dining room uses a lot of the same stuff as the kitchen, so why don't I put it in the kitchen category? And then I'll take the bathroom and put it in the home category. And you see now I've got nested categories. That's pretty handy, right? Now, here are all the tags that I have. So, uh, what do I have that's for storage? Four, four things for storage? I type storage, I click it, these are the four things I have for storage. What about clothing? Why did why did I not have anything for clothing? Oh, because I've still got storage up there. That's where the X button comes in. And then these two are for clothing. Uh, and also, it'll highlight 3D Workshop. It'll highlight Karma Printing. And it'll hi highlight Hanger. So when you pick one tag up here, it'll highlight the other tags that intersect with the one you're searching for. So if I, let's close this search out. If I go up here and do beverage, right? And then I can click that search bar and close it out. But beverages, right? It also highlights coffee. And then I can see the ones that are in coffee. And then there's also K-Cup. So I can click and see the ones that go for K-Cup. If I have storage, I can click and tell the ones that go for storage, but it adds them all together up here in, the, in your search bar. So if you want to start over, you just, Remove all of those. And then let's see which ones go for tea. Boop. And you can see that your search bar sort of kind of aggregates all of this stuff and does it together. So those are our tags. Those are our tags and those are our collections. That's how they work. You have to set them up per model, but once you get that done, it's pretty easy to deal with. 
Now let's talk about saved searches. And to do that, let's talk a little bit more about the search bar. So we saw when we clicked a tag, say beverages, it did hashtag quote beverages quote, right? So if we wanted to do a shorthand for that, we could come up here and go hashtag quotation mark storage quotation mark. Bam, if you type faster than you click, there you go. Uh, if it's not a tag and it's a collection, then it's in, in quote slash home uh, star star. Now the star star, if you're familiar with file systems, star star means everything under it too. So it'll search home, it'll search uh, kitchen, it'll search dining, it'll search office for everything in home. Now if you just wanted to search home, you would take out the star star. But if we do star star, it shows everything in home. And that's in, colon, all of that. And it does collections like a file system. Let's show our sources. Now if we wanted to pick a single source, we would say at, colon, ash, wait, tutorial, is it slash tutorial? Slash ash pool, slash da da. I think that's right, yes, okay, yes. All file systems will start with slash, do your um, hierarchy, end with slash, and then usually you'll want the double stars at the end. It'll all have um, quotation marks around it. So let's use one that's all together um, and see how quickly we can manage this. Let's expand all of these. Um, let's say hashtag storage in slash in slash home slash da da at um, uh, at tutorial wasili 1972 And that's not going to show me anything because it doesn't exist. But you can type it in. That's how you type it in. When you select these sources, it types it in for you. So like, that's how we organize with tags and collections and sources. That's how we do the searches. Um, if I want to save searches, let's do a new folder. We'll call this home and office, right? So if we have a home and office folder and I want to search uh, Keurig, you can also just use bland, normal um, coffee. And I'll do beverages, beverages. All right, so we'll save that. And we'll say hot beverages for office. And we can take that and drag it up into there. And now every time we have a home and office search and we're like, gee, did I, did I get any new coffee things? Click, oh, here are my coffee and tea things. These are all the hot beverages for my office. And that's how saved searches work. And so like, that's, I mean, bam, that's how that, you know the program now as well as I do. Like you are on top. In fact, you probably know it better than I do. So, ta-da! And there we have it. I hope you learned something, and uh, maybe if you did, you'll do, you know, the, the YouTube stuff. That'd be kind of neat. Yeah. Y'all have fun. Bye!